everyone, I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and I would like to personally welcome you to my desert garden in the city. So uh, I'm going to give you guys a tour today, because right now my garden is under a ton of shade cloth because it is a hundred and like two, three every single day. So let's take a tour. So many people might think that since it gets so hot in Arizona that you can't actually grow anything because when you walk outside you're burning up. But the truth of the matter is is that if you provide your garden with shade cloth, which are some of those that I have, or giant umbrellas, then you can grow pretty much anything that anybody else is growing. So let's see what we got in the first bed. So in here, I have my kale that's still going really well. These are all the ones that I just planted. So my kale, my lettuce, and my other kale I just planted. I will be starting another lettuce and some more collards to put into this bed. But then I also have the Swiss chard back there that is doing really, really well. Okay, so we're gonna tuck this back into its little home. As you can see, I'm just going to clip it on there because it doesn't like a lot of sun. Um, now we can grow different things like lettuces I'm trying this year so we'll see I can't say 100% on that but kale and collards and also Swiss chard we can grow throughout the summer here as long as we have a, some shade cloth and this one is a really dark kind of fabric that I have up here. Now it's going to grow a lot slower because it's not getting the full sun that it would normally get during the winter and if it does get a little too hot then and it doesn't have that shade cloth then it will get like a little bit more bitter but as long as you provide it with some shade it's gonna grow a lot slower which we don't mind because we had a long winter of eating a bunch of different greens so it kind of gives us a break and lets us eat something different while those are growing slowly so in my big patio bed look at this guys these little sprouts are corn and so far I have one, two, three, four, five, six that have sprouted so far. And I want to say I planted eight. It's going to be like a surprise because a lot of times I just threw some seeds down. But I have the collards in the back. I have the dragon tongue bush beans which are so beautiful and so delicious. If you guys have never tried this variety, I would definitely try it. They're really pretty. And these are just giving me a lot of beans actually guys there's a lot of them on here and then I have the garlic with some flowers and I have a uh, squash I'm not sure of the type my squash got all mixed up a chair or er, a wild cherry tomato and then the uh, artichoke up here I still have my herbs which are going to flower right now a lot of them are so what I plan to do is plant some more herbs inside and get them going and then just basically replace these herbs because as long as you provide some shade it'll last so I have some flowers going on here these flowers are done these are these flowers like the winter a little bit better so I'm going to plant some more summer type flowers and then in my little stackable pots I have some strawberries on top and these are some flowers on the bottom. They're actually medicinal flowers. I have to check the variety because I mix those up too with these ones. So I will check those varieties and get back to you guys on that. But I have some chamomile, I have more thyme, I have some chives, and I have some Aunt Molly's ground cherries around the chamomile. What's really doing well, guys, is this sage. The sage actually gets a little bit more direct sun, but it is underneath this um, artichoke plant. And so as you can see, this sage is beautiful. Like, it's growing in really nicely. There's no bug damage. It's kind of being protected, and it's just growing really, really nice. Even the onions are growing pretty nice, too, underneath the protection of this artichoke plant. And then we have... The creme de la creme are basil. We eat a ton of basil, so I'm actually planning to plant more basil than this because we are giving these plants and the other basil plant a workout. 
So if you didn't already know this, basil actually does pretty well here in the summer in Arizona. So, which is good for us because we love caprese salad. As long as I have tomatoes, mozzarella, basil, and balsamic, I could live all summer long and just be happy. Just be happy. Okay, so up here, I'm new to growing strawberries. So I can't really give you a definite, this is how you do it because it's the first year that I'm doing it. So I have one, two, three, four, and then the one that's in the stackable, but they seem to be doing well and they're getting a lot bigger. I keep them underneath the shade cloth. Um, the cabbages, I'm just kind of let, letting grow because I will be replacing this one and this one with an okra plant that I have growing um, in a little container. So I'm just kind of letting them stay there until the okra plant gets a lot bigger. The tomatoes, on the other hand, I now have more tomatoes that are blushing. That one and that one. So I will have more red tomatoes coming soon. And my shishito pepper plants are still doing pretty good here and there. The collards are doing good here and the parsley needs to be pruned and trimmed because that one has a lot of dead leaves on it that just need to be taken away. So a lot of people have asked me, uh, like, how long is it supposed to take for my tomato plants to start turning red? And they take a while, guys. Like, you'll get tomatoes, especially with, like, this tomato plant that I have here. This one is a determinate tomato, so it's going to put off all of its tomatoes and then slowly turn red. So sometimes it feels like you're waiting forever, but they do turn. Just keep watering it to make sure you have even watering so you don't get any splitting, and they'll eventually get there. I am excited for this Cherokee purple tomato. I have a couple on here, one right there and one right there so far, but this is the one that the birds love. <laughs> they ate all of my Cherokee purples last year, except for one, so I did get to eat one and realize how delicious it is. And then I have some little flowers coming in too as well. And then I have the thyme that's going to seed, so I'm gonna pull that one and dry it. And then the rosemary's doing pretty good. And then up here, guys, you can't really see it because it is underneath the shade cloth. Well, you can kind of see it through it, but that is my Scarlet Runner beans. The Scarlet Runner beans really got it when I was trying, in my last video, when I was trying to put up some shade cloth. But I have three other Scarlet Runner beans here and then one right there and one right there. So I'm hoping those get a little bit healthier since this one got really hit by the sun. Over here though are my royal purple, purple beans and as you can see these are doing well. I need to get out here and start picking them because as you big pick bush beans they kind of just keep growing and these are covered in bush beans. Then I have squash, I have a patty pan, patty pan, and this one might be a grazine, grazini. Once again, squash plants got mixed up, so who knows? But they are flowering, so that is a good sign. And then I have some cucumbers right back there. And over here, I want to say these are all for midget cantaloupes. I know those two are, but these leaves are starting to look a lot like these leaves. I originally thought that they were straight neck, straight neck squash, or... Uh, yeah, no guys, I wouldn't even be telling you the truth. We're just gonna have to like wait and see what grows. And then right back there is my sugar baby, watermelon. So I need to get a trellis actually for that one built. So here's the thing. This year is going to be interesting for my garden because I got everything mixed up. <laughs> and some of the things that I thought were something, I, they're not. Like I could have swore I only planted Four, two of the uh, midget cantaloupes and I have four plants that look exactly the same. If you guys are having that issue too, leave a comment so I know I'm not alone <laughs> in this mix up. But also I wanted to point out is that a lot of people ask me what type of shade cloth and how much shade like blockage do you need. I typically have 40 to 50 percent blockage but reality is is that plants need sun to grow. So you want there to be some sun on them. Um, some of my plants that are in covered by umbrellas or different things like that, those ones are growing a lot slower. So you'll see the squash out here and 
the area that is not covered by a big giant umbrella, those are already flowering. And as long as your plants are flowering, that means that they're not getting overheated because if they get overheated, they'll drop all their flowers. Okay, so over here, my okra is doing amazing. It is slowly growing and getting its height. This will soon get really, really tall. I also have some cucumbers over there that are a different cucumber. These ones are space saver cucumbers. The other ones are a pickling bush. But these ones are space savers. They'll grow probably up all the way to the top of this. And then the other ones will grow maybe only a foot or two. Also over here in my little cinder block, I have my green beans that are growing in. These are just a regular bush bean, but they are growing nicely. So, you know, you can pack bush beans in there. They like to grow together. It actually helps when you have a lot of bush beans together because as you can see, with the royal purples, they're kind of leaning down to the side. But with these ones, which these ones are a blue lake, they're kind of holding each other up because I really have them packed in here. If you look down here, there are about five plants in there. But they're really packed in there so they're holding each other up because they do get a little tall. And then I have some more bush beans back there that originally got ate by the sun, but we're growing them, seeing how they do. Now what I'm really excited about is this. Now, I originally, once again, thought that this is going to be a, a Armenian cucumber. That's what I was going for. That's what I thought I planted. But I kind of think that it is a squash. I kind of think it's a bush squash. And I say that because I am getting little females already and an Armenian cucumber would be trailing up this trellis by now kind of like the or the cantaloupe are doing so the fact that it is flowering and already putting out babies and female babies uh, I don't think that's what it is and then I have this little random bean tucked in here so that one is a Kentucky pulled bean that I had extra so I just stuck it right there so this year, I think I'm going to have poblano peppers because now I have all these little buds and they're staying on. They're not dropping, so that means the plant's doing well. And I planted two of them. They're nice and tall and they've already split into their V, which is typically what peppers do. They split like into a V and then you get flowers at the top of them. So fingers crossed because I struggled last year with poblano peppers. And then this one is another space saver cucumber. And this one, I have a new um, tomato cage, or a new, it's kind of like a, well, it's kind of a tomato cage. I'll show you guys in a minute of what I'm talking about, but it's gonna be a new one that's going here. And I'm pretty excited about it. So, you will see coming up. And then I have some more beans. These ones are bush beans. Those ones are rattlesnake beans, so those should trellis just a little bit high. And then I have some more bush beans right here. And then those are some flowers. This sage that I had planted a long time ago, guys, is now starting to do pretty well. So I'm just gonna grow it out in here and then transfer it into a bigger pot later. But what's really doing well is this bush bean plant. So, or this bush bean pot, because I have a ton of plants in here. And then I also have some Kentucky Wonders in here too as well. So these are finally starting to send off runners. So I'm looking forward to them running up this little patio trellis. Back there I have a jalapeno and as you can see it has a jalapeno on it and then right there I have a cayenne pepper which is giving me actually a lot of little cayenne peppers on there so I'm excited about that. So I moved the eggplant over here and as you can see I need to start coming in here and pulling some because that eggplant is ready. And then I have another one coming up right here, another one coming here, and then another one coming and growing here. So I have eggplants all over this plant, and this plant has done well for the past two years. So I'm gonna move it eventually into a into the ground and kind of just let it be a part of my garden permanently. And then I have some basil, and then I have some sage, and then some pretty flowers right here. Now, I can't say this 100% because I've never grown eggplants, but I think eggplant might be like a perennial. <laughs> I don't know. Does anybody else know if eggplants are perennial? Because this eggplant has been here for two years and every couple of months it gives me new eggplants. So I think I'm going to actually give this a permanent space in my garden like my artichoke plant. So then that way it can just continue to grow and really stretch out its roots. 
So guys, this is something new to my garden. I actually thought I killed this because I got it from the grandma's farm and she told me that it didn't need a lot of water and it didn't like a lot of water and it liked somewhat shade. Well, I planted it and put it in this pot and then the next day it poured raining for like three days straight so this pot was full of water and this plant completely turned brown. So I stopped watering it completely for about two weeks I want to say and I put it over here in the corner and now it's starting to green up and it's starting to grow more leaves. So this is an olivera plant and I'm very excited because olivera is something that has a lot of medicinal purposes and I wanted to always make sure I have that in my garden. Alright guys, so now I want to show you something that I'm super excited about. Um, I haven't installed it in my garden yet, but I plan to put it where that cucumber plant is. But it is a Mighty Crop system. So the company Mighty Crop actually contacted me and said, Hey, I love your small space garden because they like my videos. And they thought that this might actually help in my garden because then I can kind of train the vines where I need them and I can adjust the size of the tomato cage. So if something grows taller than the tomato cage, I can just use the Mighty Crop to be able to uh, adjust where it needs to be and to train the vines within these little hooks. And all you do is put it on a, on a, um, a pole and you just attach it like that. So I've been waiting for this little cucumber plant to get a little bit bigger and then I'm going to start training it with the Mighty Crop. So I'm super, super excited about it. Um, one of the things they have offered me to as well is a discount code for all of my viewers. So if you guys want to try Mighty Crop, I will put a link down below and you'll just use promo code Team Benson and that will give you 10% off. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little garden tour. I am going to put my garden back underneath its little protective shade cloth, put up all the umbrellas, and let it continue to grow. So make sure you guys are planting your seeds, put in your starts, and grow your garden, because even a small space garden in the middle of the desert, in 110 degrees, which it'll be there soon, will even give you tons of food. Bye guys.